We're here in the costume shop at Nashville Rep, and we're going to go over some hand sewing basics. Um, if you wanted to hand sew a seam on a garment or make a simple repair. First, we're going to talk about needles and thread and other supplies, and then we're going to go over to basic types of stitches. So what needle you use is a little bit up to personal preference, um, but in general, these are all kind of good options. These are slender needles with eyes that are kind of roughly the same size um, as the needle itself. Um, this prevents you from making a hole that's too large um, in your fabric. Um, the length is kind of up to personal preference. Some people like shorter needles like these betweens. Some people like longer needles like these millinery needles. What you don't want to use is anything that's made for upholstery or um, making like larger repairs like these needles. These are just too large for like basic hand sewing and um, some of them have quite blunt tips as well and that will not help you when you're trying to um, do basic hand sewing. For threads, you can use regular all-purpose thread that you could get at Joann or Michael's um, that's on a spool. Um, if you use that, what's really helpful is to have some beeswax, which you can also get at um, you know, a store like Joann's or Michael's to wax the thread. What can also be really helpful, but is a little more specialty, is something called stilamide. Now this is pre-cut and pre-waxed thread that is already um, the length that you need to do hand sewing. It's also less twisted. If you're pulling it off the spool, you know, it might get twisted a little bit or tangled. Um, but these are both good options. What you don't want to use is something like embroidery floss, upholstery thread, or button thread for doing basic hand stitching. Um, these are just too large and they can, again, cause holes in your fabric that are too large. Embroidery floss, in addition to being, you know, a large diameter of thread, is also weak compared to threads like these. So next we're going to thread our needle. The first thing to, you need to do to do that is to cut your thread, unless you're using pre-cut thread, of course. Um, so you want your thread not to be much longer than your arm span, um, because if it's too long, it can get tangled. It can be hard to pull out longer than the length of your arm from your work piece. So you want to measure your thread like that, cut it off of the spool, and then to thread the needle, you can use a needle threader if you prefer or not, um, if you don't want to. And you'll insert the needle threader into the eye of the needle. You'll insert the thread into the large eye of the needle threader. You'll hold the needle and you'll just pull your thread through. Next, you're gonna match up the ends of your thread we're going to be sewing with a like double of the thread. This is useful for most hand sewing that you're doing. You want to have your thread doubled. It just makes it stronger and this thread isn't so thick that the that doubling it makes it too thick. So because we're using this spool thread, we are going to run it through our beeswax here. We're just going to run it over the wax and then we're just going to run our hand over it to heat up the wax and like work it into the thread then we're going to you know just again make sure our ends are more or less the same and tie a simple knot just like you would tie on the end of a balloon and if your thread is too long you can snip it and if you prefer or if you think you need to you can add another knot right on top of the first one. Next, we're going to prepare our fabric. You'll probably want to pin together the pieces of fabric that you're sewing together. So I've marked a line on either side of my fabric that I'm going to be following in my sewing. Um, and you'll see also that the edges of the two pieces of fabric are lined up. So you wanna make sure everything is lined up and when you put your pins through, if you're working with a line, you'll wanna make sure that they are through the line on either side before you pin um, and pinning perpendicular to the line. Some people prefer to pin with the line. 
and I'm just gonna do that along the length of the line here just a few pins about a couple inches apart each of them and my pins are in and they're all nice and straight first I'm going to demonstrate the running stitch it is probably the simplest of um, the different hand stitches. So I have my thread, I've switched to red so that we can see it on the fabric, thread on my needle with a knot in one end, and at the beginning of our line we're going to put the needle into the fabric and we're going to bring it back up through on, in the same line in a small stitch. So that is one stitch, and as you get closer to the pin, you can remove it. And you're going to go back down into the fabric again, keeping you know the same distance between your stitches, and come up again. And this is a running stitch. And you're going to do this over the whole length of your line, you might find that you can put more than one stitch on your needle at once. That's totally fine. But be careful when you're pulling your thread through not to get it caught on anything else. As you pull the stitches through, you want to be careful um, not to pull your thread too tight. So you want to pull it just evenly across the fabric. If you pull it too tight, you'll get these puckers in your fabric. Now this is good if you're trying to gather, but if you're just trying to stitch a you know plain straight seam together, it's not as helpful. Um, so you just want to be mindful of that, how hard you're pulling the thread, and just want to proceed across your fabric. This stitch is mostly used to temporarily hold together seams. Um, it isn't as strong as the stitch we will be doing next, but it is very fast, um, which is a, a pro of this stitch. As we get to the end of our seam here, um, you'll want to finish it either by backstitching or tying a knot. I think we'll backstitch um, a little bit on this one and tie a knot on the next demonstration. So to backstitch, you're just going to come back through going the opposite of the stitches you made before and that will hold your stitches in place. You can trim your thread. So this is our finished seam. You can see our stitches running down the side of the seam. If we open up our fabric here, if this were a seam on a garment, you'd want to press it flat. Um, but you can see, if you were to put tension on this seam, that it isn't quite as strong um, as the next stitch that we will go over, but it is still useful. So that was the running stitch. Now we're going to talk about the back stitch. Um, the back stitch is a very strong stitch. When it's done correctly, it can be just as strong as um, a machine sewing stitch. Um, so we are going to prep our fabric again in the same manner. And it's important to, um, if this fabric had a pattern on one side, we would put those patterns, the side that we want facing out on the finished garment, both in towards each other so always right almost always right sides together we have our line and our pins again i have a needle with my thread on it and a knot at the end the back stitch starts in a very similar way to the running stitch in that you're going to put your needle down through your fabric and bring it back up again I'm going to re remove my first pin. The difference with a back stitch is that you're going to go back to where you put your needle in initially and come up a stitch, a stitch length away 
from your first initial stitch. So we're going to pull our needle through again, trying to make sure that nothing is getting caught. Just be gentle if you do encounter a tangle. Pulling too hard can make things knot up, um, which isn't very helpful. If you're gentle, you can normally um, avoid that. So we're going to put our needle again back down where our last stitch was and back up another stitch length away from our thread here. And pull through. So you're going to continue in this way along the length of your seam. Now if we look at the back of the back stitch here, you'll see that the stitches overlap each other. And on the front, you'll see that the stitches all just meet. That's what makes this stitch um, stronger than the running stitch, even though they are kind of similar. So tension, as with the running stitch, is important in the back stitch. So you want to make sure that you're pulling each um, each stitch like snug, but not too tight, and that you're pulling both sides of the fabric equally tight. Um, so as we approach the end here, we're going to remove our pin, and we're going to tie off this stitch. So we've reached the end here we're going to just close up that final stitch by coming back up through and to tie this off we're going to slide our needle through that final stitch we have a loop here that you see we're going to twist our loop in our other hand once pick up our needle so we have our loop in one hand our needle in the other Put our needle through that loop and pull it close to the fabric and that's a knot you can do that more than once for extra security so this is our finished seam on the front you can see all of the individual stitches meeting up with each other on the back you can see how they kind of overlap each other um, and if you were to open this and press it open which is how we want, always want almost always want to finish seams you can see the stitches in there and that they're a lot closer together than they were with the running stitch so that's a lot stronger than the running stitch was. So we have our running stitch here, our finished running stitch here, and our finished back stitch here. Um, in another video we will, we will cover doing buttons by hand and doing hems by hand.